Welcome to BI Sims tutorial on the new VBS3 Call for Fire module. Introduced in VBS3 version 19.1, the VBS Call for Fire module provides a simulated fire direction center, allowing forward observers to practice tactics, techniques, and procedures when requesting firepower. The module is built into VBS3 and provides simple FTC operation for the instructor to set up gun lines. This enables the FTC operator to provide the requested fire support to FO trainees. In this video, we'll show you how the new Call for Fire module works in a training scenario. Let's begin. The Fire Direction Center opens in the VBS3 editor from the FDC tab on the left or right. When open, VBS Call for Fire displays two interfaces. The left side is the Fire Direction Center. The right is the gun line details. Next, we select the location for our gun lines. We'll call this gun line Thunder. The target prefix is Alpha Alpha. This is completely customizable, whatever your doctrine might be. We'll place our gun line marker on the 2D map and the marker will expand as we build it out. With VBS Call for Fire, we can choose from a preset gun line formation or create custom ones. Here, we'll select 155 mm howitzers and make the count six guns online. We can also adjust the gun spacing orientation, dispersion, and loadout. The Gunline events offers important benefits to the FDC. You can have unit-specified times for how long it takes a gun to prep, how long it takes a gun to lay, how long it takes a gun to fire, and get rounds on target. Here are our six guns. In this case, we have also added support equipment into the scene. VBS Call for Fire also features mortar gun lines by default that can be configured in a similar way. Administrators can configure the FTC UI to use any VBS3 gun or ammunition type in addition to those included by default. You can get more details on how to customize this in our manuals. Next, we'll create two targets near the enemy positions. We can easily zoom in and out of the 2D map to correctly locate target areas by using our middle mouse wheel. Now, we'll place an observer unit on the terrain that our trainee can play. Let's put one here. We'll check if they have good line of sight to the target locations. We now have our FO and an artillery gun line. Let's start our scenario. We'll go to File and then Save Mission. Then we'll give our mission a name and hit OK. We'll find our mission, select it, and hit Start from the networking menu. We can see our FO unit in the lobby, and our trainee would select their role and enter the training scenario. From the trainee's perspective, nothing changes. You are still seeing and hearing things in the scenario, conducting targeting, and role-playing with an instructor who communicates with you via VBS radio. As the instructor, you are looking at the FTC panel. Let's say I start getting a mission from the forward observer trainee. Click on the call sign for FO1. He says he's requesting a just fire. He's requesting Thunder. We'll fire one round from Thunder at our enemy target location. I'll select the ammunition 155HE M795. With VBS Call for Fire, you have options. You can say I want the entire gun line to fire, or I want the gun line to fire a number of rounds per gun, or I want the gun line to fire a number of rounds per minute. The rounds per minute are restricted to 12 rounds. The red exclamation point indicates that this realistically limits what can be fired. Now I select my trajectory. You can also select area precision and danger close, but these are just for exercise recording purposes. When you conduct your after action review, you can consider those factors for debrief. Next, we process the mission. On the 2D map, you'll see a trajectory preview line. The green line shows the ascending trajectory. The black square is the trajectory vertex and the purple line shows the descending trajectory. The left FTC UI tells what the mission number is, who it's supporting, who's the gun line, 
how many rounds are being fired and what exactly is happening. This is the target coordinate. We're firing gun 3 at the gun target line at 4135 mils. Firing 155 HE, time of flight is 14 seconds. When you're role playing, if this comes up, the mission is good to go. If the mission is not good to go, suppose I'm out of range for example, you will get a warning that says, try again. As an instructor, communicate this information back to the FO trainee. If everything is good to go, I hit start mission. You can see the left side updates and on the right, after selecting the gun line, the thunder is going through its process. The left side updates the mission and you can repeat it, you can adjust the mission or you can fire for effect. Let's see what's going on. The fire mission is underway. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we have impact. If I'm not happy with that round, I can adjust it. Remember, your adjustments are based on the observer of the target. Let's say I wanted to go a little to the back and to the right. So, I adjust fire. We can see the next round going through loading and laying. You can see where the round is and if our adjustment worked. VBS Call for Fire also provides the ability to show shot trajectory. You can turn that on and off with the eye icon, on the fire direction center or the gun line details. To stop the mission, I click the End Mission button in the FTC UI on the left. Another key benefit of VBS3 is that Call for Fire scenarios can be reviewed in the After Action Review. To playback missions from the FTC, select and highlight the Fire Mission Entry in the Mission Playback Interface. Use the Play, Reverse and Forward buttons to control the AAR. As you can see from our tutorial, BBS Call for Fire offers a workflow that FOs and FISTs will be very familiar with and is very easy to set up. That concludes our BBS3 Call for Fire tutorial. Thanks for watching.